Hello, everybody. We can go ahead and get started. It's four o'clock now. Um, so welcome to the Medical School Admissions Webinar. We're so excited that you're all here today and hope you can learn a lot and ask a lot of questions. Uh, my name's Haley Talbot. I'm the STEM Education Coordinator at UI Healthcare. So I'm kind of going to be troubleshooting, helping manage the questions and answers later. But we have two medical school admissions counselors from the Carver College of Medicine here. They're going to give a short presentation and tell you a little bit more about maybe applying and what you can do to stand out as you go through high school and college and prepare to apply to medical school. And then we also have two medical students from the Carver College of Medicine here to help answer any questions as well. So just a quick reminder, this is a Zoom webinar, so you can see our panelists, but they cannot see or hear you. So when it comes to the Q&A portion, we'll just ask that you put all of your questions into the Q&A feature that will be at the bottom of your Zoom panel. So that being said, I will hand it over to Rachel and Megan and they can get started. Awesome, thanks Haley. Welcome everybody, thanks for attending today. Um, Megan and I are gonna start off with, oh, just kind of chatting with you all and showing you a little presentation to chat through things that we look for in a medical school applicant when you're kind of going through the application process and preparing for that no matter what point you're at now, whether it's high school, whether you're an undergrad in college, hopefully we'll be able to provide you some helpful tips for whatever point that you're at. But to kind of get to know you all a little bit, since we can't see you or hear you, I'm going to throw a question into the chat box quick. And if you could and are willing to participate, please just throw your answer into the chat just so that we can kind of see what you know and what you think about becoming a doctor. So give me one second and I'm going to put this question in the chat. There are a lot of attendees. Here yeah. Today. All right, so the question's in the chat. What qualities do you think a good physician should have? A good doctor. Go ahead and share what you think. It could be anything. Hearing. These are awesome. Teachers and communicators, compassionate, friendly, patient, empathetic, yeah. Ability to listen, selfless, have leadership and be collaborative, social skills, organized, open-minded. These are awesome. Humility. I'm rolling it. <laughs> Strong so volunteer. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, and nobody said 4.0 GPA and that's it. So that's you're ahead of the game already. <laughs> good. Problem solver, creative, honest. Yeah. Yeah, good listeners. Great. Personal skills matter. Absolutely. Okay, good. You all are off to a great start here. Okay. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you for getting us started. And it's nice to know there are actually people out there. Yes. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is ask you to use Padlet. I don't know if, if any of you are familiar with Padlet, but I'm gonna put this link in the chat. Go ahead and click on the link. It should take you to another screen. And um, I'm gonna pull that up myself here. And it's going to ask you what activities you're currently involved in. So if you'd go to that little Padlet screen, you should be able to click on the little plus sign um, and add a new, uh, a new phrase in there or answer. Yep, people are already typing. So go ahead, tell us what you're already involved in, um, aside from the classes that you're in. So we have soccer. Golf, dance, cheer, National Honor Society, volleyball, choir, softball, fraternity, band, chorus, theater, 
lots of different things here. Pre-Health Club uh, co-president on college campus, fitness. And I think we have a, a nice mix of attendees today. So we have some folks that are in high school, um, some that are already in college. I don't know if there's anybody who has made it to high school yet, but we have a wide range of folks. So we're gonna try to give you good tips no matter where you're at in this process. Do you see anything else jumping out, Rach, with what people are saying, volunteering? Acapella. Did you see anyone say that they have a job? Oh, you're on mute, Rachel. <laughs> Sorry, you just listed a bunch of things. Nobody heard it. Ross <laughs> is one. Um, the discovery program, volunteering is one. Let's look for any employment. Does anybody have a job? Boy Scouts, let's see. E emergency department scribing. They have good. that's a good one. Um let's see, move some things around here. Landscaping business, some more scribing. Very cool. I'm a CNA, a lamp maker. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a pretty active group of people here. We're going to hang on to this list. Yeah, um, we think this is kind of a fun way to get everybody involved and see what folks are doing here. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay, well, Rach, do you want to share our presentation? We'll start there. You bet. Let's see. Give me one second and I will pull up our PowerPoint here. Okay, let's see here. All right. Can everybody see that? Megan, can you see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Great. So we are so happy to have you here. Um, it's nice to have a wide array of folks and a couple of med students too. So they can probably tell you that the things that you were saying in that chat are very accurate with the types of qualities you need to really be successful in this career path. So um, Rich, if you want to skip to the next slide there. Um, we are both admissions officers for the Carver College of Medicine. So we would be folks that you would meet with if you had questions about medical school. We talk with prospective students all the time folks that are applying, and also folks that didn't get into med school and want to improve their application and try again. Um, so we really like talking to all of you, trying to give you the tools you need to be successful and to know what you need to be a good applicant, a strong and competitive applicant. Um, we also are big fans of dogs, so you're going to have to see a couple of cute dog pictures throughout this presentation. Um, this is one of our favorites here. So the slide says, some people walk in the rain, others just get wet. We hope that by the end of this presentation, you're going to feel like we gave you the galoshes, the umbrella, um, that you're ready. You're not going to just get wet, but you'll be able to walk in the rain confidently and feel like you're on the right path so that you can have a strong application for medical school. Get a little more perspective there. Thank you, Rach. Awesome. So this is just kind of going to give you an outline of what we'll talk about in the next few minutes. And so there's another picture of a dog just kind of paving it. But, you know, when we also like dogs and, and we think, you know, boats and boating and water are really fun theme too. So we're kind of going to incorporate that into the theme of today as well. But, you know, when you think about beginning a journey or you're beginning your journey to applying to medical school, it's really important to map your route and think about what particular path that you're going to take to achieve this dream and reach your destination. It's important to check the weather and pack your supplies, make sure that you're prepared for any obstacles that may be outside of your control or things to look out for, and then just make sure that you've kind of got your backpack or your bag of supplies and the skills that you need to be successful on your journey. And just being aware of your surroundings and things that are happening as you go and making sure that you're supported in your journey. So maybe this is a community of other students who are applying to medical school or are interested in being a doctor and you can kind of collaborate and share those interests as you all work toward this goal together. 
but be friendly and lend a helping hand and make sure that you are being supportive of others as you seek others to be supportive of you as you progress throughout this journey and you know paving your own way to medical school. So when we kind of think about preparing for your journey and what we look for and the admissions committee for medical schools look for are a variety of different things. But what this slide will show you are just some kind of bigger picture concepts or things to think about, you know, as you're preparing to begin this journey and things to keep in mind as you go. But, you know, you can see out of these six um, that they're all really important and can be done in multiple different ways and should kind of be integrated into all of the things that you do. Having high moral character, being a good person and being caring. And, uh, you know, a lot of you mentioned that good physicians should be sensitive and caring and compassionate. And so really producing all of those things and everything that you do and having a good moral character and just being a good person is going to help you along the way and help you to be a really compassionate doctor and a good physician. Um, having the ability to communicate with others in a sensitive and caring way. A lot of you said in the chat that you think communication skills are important and that being empathetic and understanding and a good listener, those are all really awesome things that are important to possess in all of the things that you do. So whether this is in school or different jobs that you have, or maybe you're volunteering or you are shadowing, it's important to practice these things and be able to communicate not only effectively, but also in a really gentle way in a caring way depending on who you're interacting with. Having a dedication to the idea of service. So this was also mentioned in the chat. So being altruistic and having a commitment to helping other people is really important in being um, a strong candidate for medical school and ultimately you know a good physician because you know, you have to be altruistic and have the desire to help other people. And so having volunteer experiences, whether that be healthcare related or whether that be out in your community are important and should be really integral within your medical school application. Having a commitment to diversity and inclusion, understanding that as a physician, you will have the opportunity to work with patients and different populations of people who are coming from all different places and situations and backgrounds. And so being inclusive of that and understanding and acknowledging that people have different religious beliefs or cultures or come from different situations is super important to make sure that you are you know, keeping an open mind with all of your patients. Having elements of leadership and teamwork are also important and um, showing that you are going above and beyond in different organizations that you're involved in and really taking on a sense of leadership and responsibility and really making a difference in the different things that you're involved in are great to see. And being a good team player. As a physician, you're oftentimes part of a team of multiple healthcare uh, professionals. And so making sure that you are pulling your weight and being an active listener and participating and being a good team member and supporting those around you is really important in the profession. And lastly, using strengths and unique strengths, experiences, and backgrounds. Everyone is on their own individual path and their own individual journey for applying to medical school. And so you should capitalize upon the things that you can bring to your application and that you can offer. Be unique, be yourself, pursue experiences that are interesting to you and that you are taking something away from. You know, not everyone is interested in being a scribe and that's okay. You know, choose the Choose the opportunities that are really interesting to you and that are going to have an impact not only on you, but on those that you are working with and use that to build your application in a really genuine way so that the committee can help to get to know you. All right, Megan, moving on to you. Great, thank you. And this just follows up on what Rachel was saying. And I think she's right, you did a great job of putting those types of things in the chat and on the Padlet, it sounds like you're already taking the right steps in a lot of different ways. Um, and we don't want you to disqualify anything that you're doing right now. So a lot of times students will come to us and say, well, I have a part-time job because I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to pay for my education and that sort of thing. That's completely relevant. It's about what you get out of the experience. So always jot down what it is you're doing, how you're spending your time, and what you learned from that activity, because you'll want to circle back to that later on when you get to the point of the application. Um, so I think a good way to look at this is to think about three questions. So when it comes to what admissions committees are looking for, um, 
we want to see a well-rounded applicant and that's why Rachel is going through all those different categories. You want to see um, that you have lots of different interests, you've been involved in different things. Um, but we want to know how you spend your time. So that's one question you'll need to answer when you're filling out the application. How do you spend your time? You'll have the opportunity to list up to 15 items that you've been working on. Um, and what we'll be looking for is things that you've done after high school. So if you are doing something now and you are a high school student, um, I think it's a great way to build experience and then also open doors in the future. So if you're already having, working on becoming a CNA, that's going to open more doors in the future. If you're starting to do informational interviews um, or talk with physicians about what their career is like now, it's going to help you later on. So you're kind of building on those blocks. So we wanna know how you spend your time. We wanna know if you're a helper and a giver. So somebody that volunteers, just like Rachel was mentioning, that's really important to us. And then we also want to know why medicine's right for you. So you wanna show us that you've done your research and that this is the right career path for you. Um, because as our med students can attest to, this takes a heck of a lot of work. You don't wanna go through this process if it's not the right career path for you, which is why we want you to, to have um, work experiences, volunteer experiences, shadowing experiences, things like that, that help us get to know that you've really done your research and you know you want to be a physician. Um, so this slide just kind of highlights different things that we're looking for when you apply to medical school. So yes, we wanna see strong grades. We wanna see that you have a good foundation and can be successful um, in your application and a strong MCAT score. Um, which is kind of equivalent to the ACT or SAT, um, only much more difficult and painful. But we want that score to show that you do have the foundation to do well in the coursework in medical school. Um, and then the other things really look at your experiences. What have you been up to? How have you been spending your time? And some of you might have already dipped into some of this, but definitely volunteer work. We wanna make sure that you're giving back to the community, that you care about other people. It should be evident in your application that you're an altruistic person um, and you like to be involved in helping others. Um, like Rachel was mentioning, having some leadership and teamwork experiences, it's great to see teaching or mentoring. So that could be coaching little kids soccer, it could be teaching piano, it could be tutoring um, for a chemistry course, anything like that is really great to see. Having some medical experiences to pull on that's really helpful and that could be shadowing, volunteering, having, um, having employment. So like some folks mentioned the CNA and scribing positions, those sorts of things are really great to see. Um, we want you to, to participate in activities that you do for at least some significant period of time. So not just a one-off, one weekend volunteer event, but something where you're doing something for maybe multiple semesters. It really shows a commitment to that organization or activity. Um, and that might lead to stronger letters of recommendation. So I think that's something that you'll wanna be aware of as you move through things. You wanna be involved in things you genuinely care about, you can invest in, and then hopefully the folks that you're working with will see that and it will translate to a strong letter of recommendation. Um, so those are just some things we're looking for. We also want folks who have, um, have outside interests. So we wanna hear about your hobbies. Um, so that's something that folks will often leave off their applications, but when we see that you have other outside interests, it helps us understand that you have a way to manage stress, that you have something to bring to the table that other classmates might benefit from. So maybe you're a marathon runner or something like that. What could you do when times get tough? You'll have an outlet. That's really great to hear about. Um, and it humanizes you when you apply for medical school. So it helps us see what's different about you or something that, that we can really latch on to and say, oh yeah, that sounds like somebody who's really thinking about um, a work-life balance and being healthy. Great, thank you, Rachel. Okay, so in terms of what you can focus on now, it does depend a little bit about what stage you're at, um, but I think just seeing from the Padlet, a lot of you are already involved in the types of things that are really helpful. So um, academics, absolutely, you wanna keep your GPA up. Um, you want to practice good study skills, start learning those now. Um, seek out help and academic resources when you need them. Even the smartest, smartest student who had the perfect grade 
in undergrad that gets into medical school is known to struggle when they get to medical school. So if you are running into any issues, get out there and seek out help. You're going to have to do that as a medical student, become comfortable with that. I think that's really a helpful tool. Um, another thing that you can do is educate yourself about the medical field. So that might not be in a specific course, but instead information that you seek, seek out. So uh, for instance, we have at Carver, we have the Short Coat Podcast. That's a great place to go to hear other medical students talk about their experiences and answer questions. Just try to do what you can to figure out what medical school is like, what the field is like, and make sure this is right for you. And other extracurricular activities that you can participate in are listed here as well. So um, getting some physician shadowing experience. I know with COVID that's a little difficult right now. There are some virtual shadowing experiences, but one idea might be to try to get involved in informational interviews. So reach out to physicians or folks in the field, ask them if you can um, talk with them about what their what their positions are like, what, what's the good, the bad, <laughs> those sorts of things. Um, try to get more information. And then maybe when things start to open up, you could reach back out to the person and say, hey, you know, that was so great that we got to have that conversation. I'm wondering if there might be any opportunity to shadow you, that sort of thing. So start building those blocks now. Same thing with volunteering. And if the regular type of volunteering that you want to get involved in isn't available to you at the moment because of COVID, try to be creative and see what you can do. And you wanna be safe. We don't want you putting yourself out there and feeling unsafe in any sort of scenario, um, but you can definitely be creative, whether that's helping with a crisis hotline, um, helping with the food bank, helping deliver, deliver groceries to folks that aren't able to get to the stores, making masks, whatever it takes, but show that you care about other people and you want to help, even if it's not in the typical way, be creative there. Um, so the other stuff just talks about things that we have already touched on. So being a teacher or a mentor, um, participating in extracurricular activities, all of that's really helpful. So, and I think Rach, we have another slide that kind of follows up on this. Yeah, thanks Megan. So kind of going along. Thanks for sending the, podcast link out to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the um, chat now. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, out of all of the things that Megan touched on and the different extracurriculars that are out there for you to do and whatever you choose to do, it's also important just to focus on and think about what transferable skills you can take away from those activities to or what you can continue to work on. So being a critical thinker and thinking outside of the box and helping to solve problems, um, the more that you get involved in, the more difficult it becomes to manage your time too. So no matter what point you're at, as you continue to you know, gather opportunities and responsibilities and experiences, learning how to effectively manage your time can help you to not be so stressed out if you're in high school now as you transition into college or as you continue throughout your undergraduate experience. Um, it's also important to practice your communication skills. And I know that was mentioned in the chat too, that that's a really important quality in becoming a doctor. And so, you know, we often advise applicants and students that, you know, any interaction you have is meaningful and you should make sure that you treat it as being meaningful. And so that's making sure that you are being professional and um, kind and well-spoken in your written communication. Um, that's something that, you know, Megan and I talk about that a lot. And we talk about that with a variety of different student groups. So making sure that your written communication is strong and professional, um, making sure that any, you know, spoken or oral interactions that you have with individuals, whether that be informational interviews with physicians or in your different employment or volunteer opportunities, that you are being respectful and kind because those interactions really matter too. Uh, being altruistic, and if you are unfamiliar with what that word means, that just means having kind of an, in, an innate desire to help people. And so making sure that you are, you know, that that's important to you and that you are seeking opportunities where you really care about what you're doing, because that's going to help you to do it better, right? And to know that you are getting enjoyment out of making a difference and ultimately helping other people. 
being culturally competent. So being aware and respectful of all individuals that you interact with and, and being aware of different beliefs or practices that they might have and making sure that you're respecting those. Because like we talked about, being a physician, you will work with all different kinds of people. Um, having having strong social skills and being kind and, and friendly and, and understanding with everyone that you work with. But be resilient and be reflective. Um, oftentimes we advise applicants that it's helpful to keep a, keep a journal as you are going through your different experiences and as you are getting a job or you may be shadow of a physician or you're working with patients. Oftentimes it's helpful to write about these experiences as you go so that when it comes time for you to fill out your medical school application, you're not having to rack your brain and think about, oh gosh, what did I learn from this particular experience or what did I take away or what was something that was really impactful. When you reflect and you journal as you go, it's often much easier to recall those things and then write about them in more impactful detail. So these are just some helpful transferable skills, but back to being resilient, you know, if something, if you try something and you maybe don't love it, it's okay to try something new. Or if you take a test and it maybe doesn't go as well as you thought it would, that's okay. Come back from it, bounce back, use your resources, and, and it's okay to kind of build upon those experiences and be resilient with everything that you do. All right, so this is just some advice from our current medical students at Carver. And so given all the information that we have thrown at you very quickly today, these are just some helpful quotes as you continue and to embark on your journey. So just be ready to work hard and get a good idea of what you're getting into before fully committing. So that's why we kind of asked you that question in the very beginning of what do you think good qualities in a physician, a physician should have? You know, understanding what the profession looks like and what you need to do to be a successful doctor is helpful to know before you embark on this journey. Um, practice having a strong work-life balance before coming to medical school. Practicing those time management skills is important. Um, working on your hobbies, like Megan mentioned, and finding things to provide you balance in your life because applying to medical school can be stressful and we want you to find that balance sooner than later. But stay the path and as long as you stay in the race, you'll eventually get into medical school. So basically that just means use your resources and try your hardest and you know, there are people to help you along the way, but as long as you believe in yourself and you work hard, that helps to set you up for success. Great. Thank you, Rach. Yeah, I think that's a really awesome point is that you don't have to be in this alone. Use your resources. It's something you want to practice doing right now because you definitely will have to do that later. Um, if you're a student here at the University of Iowa or whatever institution you end up in um, for your undergraduate degree, there should be really good resources out there to help you, pre-medical advisors. When you get closer to actually applying, Rachel and I would be happy to speak with you if you, if you had specific questions about your application. We don't want this to be a mystery. That's why we do presentations like this, so that that way you're not just guessing at what it is we're looking for exactly. So remember, we are looking for well-rounded applicants. Um, we want you to set yourself up for success now, so setting good habits, setting um, small, measurable, and attainable goals. Um, so you, you don't have to become a CNA tomorrow. That's probably not possible if you haven't been working on it, right? But you could do some research about it tomorrow and see what steps you have to take and then start working towards that goal. What can you do this week? What can you do tomorrow? Treat everything kind of as a class and set goals along the way and check in with yourself and say, is this still what I wanna do? Is this still reasonable? Um, am I making progress? And remember why you're in this, why you want to do this, and that'll help push you forward. Maybe it's time to get a little tough there. Um, establishing healthy habits and balance is really, really important to start doing now. Um, being present and reflective, like Rachel was saying, if you practice doing that now, you'll just be more open to observing the world around you. Um, and you'll be able to better keep track of what it is you've learned from your experiences because that's what we're going to need to hear when you do apply to medical school. And we wanna make sure that you know you have to believe in yourself, right? So some of that might be getting some good mentors, mentorship, right? And giving yourself some experiences so that that way you're not just saying, oh, in theory, medical school sounds like a good idea, but you've gone out there, you've done the research, you have people rooting for you there in your corner because you've already worked on making these connections and you feel supported. I think that's something that's really important in this process. 
So hopefully, at least we've given you um, some of these starting tools, your suitcase, your galoshes, your umbrella, and you feel um, like you have the tools. This isn't a complete mystery with what we're looking for in medical school applicants. And I think we'll open it up for questions now. Let me stop sharing my screen. Yeah, so if you guys want to start putting your questions into the Q&A feature, we'll have our medical students introduce themselves real quick. Hi, uh, my name is Kenton Kingsbury. I am originally from a small town in northwestern Iowa called Lawton. Um, I went to undergrad here at the University of Iowa. I majored in human physiology. Um, so I'll add, I graduated from a high school of 33 in my class. Um, never really thought I would end up in medical school. I knew in high school that I wanted to pursue medicine, but just coming from a small school, no one had really done it before. So I was pretty unsure and had to reach out and use a lot of resources, kind of like they presented today. So just a little inspiration it is possible wherever you're at. Hi, everyone. My name is Emilio Tovar. I'm an M1. Um, I'm from Iowa City, and I went to the University of Iowa, got my degree this past spring in medical anthropology. Um, I similarly went to a small school here in Iowa City, um, but from my background a little bit, um, I come from a family of immigrants, so um, I was really one of the first people to, to come to college and especially to get a professional degree. So again, I used quite a few of the resources that they've mentioned before, and they, they definitely are a big help. All right, awesome. So I guess when I ask a question, you guys can just kind of decide who would be the best person to answer that. Um, the first one is, what is the minimum, minimum GPA you need to get into medical school? I think we can take that one. Um, so we never like to look at minimums. Uh, minimums usually don't make the cut. So I think you want to definitely shoot higher than that. Um, for a minimum to work, everything else in your application has to be stellar. So just be aware of that. And I'd say a better question to ask might be, what's the average GPA or something like that to help you understand what is a reasonable goal to shoot for. And then remember, there are always folks above and below. Um, but the minimum GPA that we're looking for in medical school would be at least a 3.0. Um, overall GPA and in the science courses. So we call that the BCPM GPA, which is biology, chemistry, physics, and math. Um, but you really need to shoot above that. So on average, we're looking at probably a 3.7 or a 3.8 in those areas. But again, that's, that's an average and there are folks that are below and folks that are above. Um, one good way to think about it is if your GPA is a little bit below, you want to look at the rest of your application and is that maybe a little stronger than where other people are at because it is a holistic review so you might have more experiences you might have different things on your plate that make it so that it's harder for you to get that high gpa because you do have to work a lot or you're on a sports team or something like that and we take all of that into consideration is there anything you would add to that reach no i think that's great it, the you know the averages are a good thing to go off of but i do think it's important to remember like there are applicants above and below that, and you really have to look at it holistically. So nice job. All right, so our next question is, what would someone do if they're interested in shadowing? Who would I be able to go to? Maybe one of the students might take that, yeah. So um, I have a pretty unique experience. Most of, I knew a few doctors coming into medical school just from like the community um, going to the uh, going to college where you grew up kind of helps with that but honestly like there was one time where um, I was interested in cardiology and so I looked up the hospital's directory of doctors and literally scrolled down a list found one that seemed interesting and emailed him and he got me shadowing that next week so it's really that simple. You just have to put yourself out there, be willing to reach out to people and ask. Um, but there's also organizations that you can get into that'll hook you up with doctors that um, are willing to have you shadow them. Great. So the next one is, what is the best undergraduate degree for medical school? 
Well, if we look at that quick from an admissions perspective, um, it really doesn't matter to us what your undergraduate degree is. Um, you know, you should pick something that you are genuinely interested in and that you're going to enjoy because then you're more likely to be successful in those classes. So we have had medical students who majored in the sciences, but we've also had medical students who majored in, you know, music or English or writing or psychology. So choose whatever genuinely interests you. And if you have to follow something like a pre-medicine track to help make sure you get those science or those prerequisite courses, then you can absolutely do that. But as far as whatever that major is, it's entirely up to you. Great, so going off of that, does where you go to college for your undergraduate degree matter to get into medical school? For example, a small private school versus a large public university? Yeah, I think it definitely matters, but there's not a right or wrong answer with where you should go. So this kind of falls in line with what we've been talking about before. Um, you want to pick somewhere that's a good fit for you. So, so a school that is a super top ranked school might not be a good fit for you because you want more of a community uh, feel and you want to be at a smaller institution or something like that, right? So if that's where you're going to be more successful, I think that's a better place to go. You might have to seek out more resources. So there are some schools that don't have pre-med advising. Um, or that just don't have the pre-medical clubs and things like that. So it might be something to research to see if you think that they'll have the resources that you need. But you want a place that you feel comfortable, just like you want to have a major that you are invested in. You'll do much better in those classes. You'll do much better at the school that has the right kind of environment for you. But we do take into account um, for instance, if you are an engineering major, we know that's a pretty difficult major, um, especially if you're at some top tier school and if you're an engineer, your GPA will likely be a little bit lower. It is part of that holistic application. So it's not always apples to apples. We take those things into consideration, but it's what you do with your experience while you're there. All right, so this one is for the medical students. What activities did either of you do during college and high school um, to help you prepare for your application? Um, I can say for, start off with college. Um, so I volunteered in college at the um, university hospital here. I was a baby cuddler in the NICU. So I held babies, it was three and a half years. I was there almost four years. Um, and so that was really, fun way to get involved. It's in a healthcare setting, but it's something that um, I enjoy doing, so it doesn't necessarily feel like work. Um, and then throughout undergrad, too, I was employed the whole time, so I worked about 20 hours a week. For my first year, I was actually a cake decorator, um, so it's not very medical related at all, but I enjoyed doing it, and it's kind of a continuation from undergrad, or um, from high school. And then, um, after that, I got a job in the, um, at the hospital as a nursing assistant in the operating room. So um, that filled up my time. And then I was in various other clubs and things like that. Yeah, and um, for me, actually, Kenton uh, finished, he graduated right before I got on the student leaderboard for the volunteer services. So I volunteered in the burn unit for three years, um, which was, again, a great experience getting to to meet with patients and you really develop the love for patient interaction there. Um, but I was um, in a, a few different, like uh, I was in Medicus, which is a pre-med club, I guess. Um, for jobs, I worked as an RA one year. Um, I also coach high school soccer still because um, it was something I love to do and Iowa doesn't have a, a university team. so. Uh, did some club stuff and yeah, I just love soccer. So um, kept pursuing that. I started working at our climbing wall that we have because I fell in love with climbing in undergrad. So just pursued different things that uh, caught my interest over the years. Awesome. So if you decide to go to medical school and are unsure of what kind of doctor you want to be, will you have time to figure it out then? I would say yes, because I don't know what I want to go into right now. So definitely you do not need to know going into it. I would say that's also the, how the majority of my class feels. 
Um, even people come in knowing what they want or think they know what they want to do and they have already became undecided or changed their minds. So it's all, always varying. <laughs> Okay. What are some benefits of going to University of Iowa since it has a medical school on campus? Do you want us to answer that? I don't know if the student perspective might be, might be a little different there. Um, I guess since I, or I guess Amelia and I both went here, but um, I would say it is just nice having access to a hospital um, having it near campus. So I would say any college with kind of access to a hospital that has volunteering opportunities, employment opportunities is helpful in general versus a college that is like just maybe an hour away from the nearest hospital or something like that. Um, so that just helps with access. And then um, having um, like the admission staff or faculty like physicians that you can get to know who go to Carver and can kind of maybe write you a letter of rec or something like that, I think helps when you're applying to that institution but definitely not necessary because I know there's some people in my class who didn't go to you know our um, universities that have hospitals or medical schools so just might help a little bit I guess yeah and uh, but, uh, following up with that just say that the pre-med curriculum is kind of tailored towards Iowa's medical program so um, when you've taken the pre-med classes here you know you'll be fully prepared for med school here at Iowa. Um, so I'd say that's another helpful thing. Okay, someone wants to know if either of the medical students took a gap year and if you did, did you benefit from it? Um, and would you suggest it to your peers if you did not? I did not take a gap year, but I know a lot of people who have and got a lot of really good experiences out of it. Um, I would recommend if as we talked before about, uh, you know, if you're working your way through college trying to um, pay for tuition and stuff like that, sometimes it can be hard to do the volunteer opportunities that are non-paid. So if you're maybe thinking that you don't have as much uh, patient experience or volunteer work that you'd like to, I'd say definitely uh, take, take a gap year work and then take your extra time to do some volunteering. And um, I'd say that would definitely help. Um, I actually graduated undergrad in three and a half years, so I had a sort of gap semester um, where I just took time off. I worked for half of it, and then um, the second half I just traveled and spent time with my family before starting in the fall. Um, and I would say I really, really enjoyed it and actually wish I maybe would have taken a whole year off. Um, so just having that like six months just to collect myself, I got to pursue hobbies that I wouldn't have before um, from being in school. And so um, I definitely recommend it. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. Um, kind of before I thought I was going to be wish I was being productive or um, like school wise or like starting school or doing something school wise, but definitely not the case at all. And I, I'd recommend it. I wish I would have taken longer. And I think we just looked this up today, Rach. What was it? 65% of students, <laughs> right? <laughs> 65% of students who entered this year um, took a gap year or more, um, so weren't coming straight out of undergraduate. I think that's really interesting, and it might be a myth that most people think, oh, you know, I'll go straight to medical school right after. It's often not the case, and wasn't it 65% the year before, too? Is that right, it was. Rachel? Yes. Yeah. And they're also so, in Oh, sorry, I think I'm going a little bit. That also includes um, anyone who's done like a master's or a graduate program okay. after undergrad too. Yeah. So, often yeah. when we read applications from folks who took a little time off, they have more to say, number one, right? And they have time to be more reflective. If you're applying right from undergrad, um, you don't have as much time to do the things that you might want to do. And everything kind of might feel a little rushed because you're also trying to fill out applications as you're still in school and filling out applications can feel like a full time job and interviewing is a lot of work and all of those things. Um, so we always tell people to try to put their best foot forward and that might mean altering your timeline a little bit to give yourself the best chance um, to feel like you're where you need to be 
Um, and that might be something you talk with your pre-med advisors about or reach out to us so we can help you understand if you need more, more time to do something or another. Um, but don't feel pressured, lots and lots of folks don't go into medical school right after they take a little time. So a few people are asking kind of about the schedule of a medical student. How often do you study? Do you have free time? How often are tests? So if you just want to kind of walk through a day or a week in the life of a medical student, I think that will be helpful for a few of these questions. Um, I guess I can go first. So I will say weeks tend to vary a little bit. Um, and we'll talk about Iowa's curriculum, but I know um, other medical schools are definitely different than ours. Uh, we have exams on Fridays, which is really nice. So you can kind of um, enjoy your weekend more and then um, kind of spend the week um, towards the beginning of the week getting ready for your test on Friday. Um, and this is definitely not every week. So it kind of varies. Sometimes you'll have a descent of three weeks where you have an exam every Friday or every Friday, but then you'll have a couple of weeks where you have a break. Um, so that's really nice. Um, our classes tend to be more heavily in the morning. So usually from eight to noon won't be um, some sort of small groups and lectures. And then we um, always have a uh, noon to one as a lunch break and you really can do whatever you want. A lot of times there's informational meetings, interest group meetings, they'll plan activities over those, but those are always optional and only if you want to go to them. A lot of times you can eat your lunch during them too. Um, there's also like clubs, people play games. This is pre COVID, but um, you can like, there'll be people playing soccer in the courtyard and things like that. Um, and then the afternoon is a little bit variable. I would say I never really had anything later than four, maybe five. Um, and that would only be a couple days of the week. Um, I usually take a break for dinner and then I'll study maybe four, five hours in the night, depending on how busy the week is. If it's a lighter week, I won't do that, but, um, definitely there's time to study outside of classes. So it doesn't feel like you're totally booked the whole day. And there's definitely time to exercise, hang with friends, talk with your family. Um, and kind of fit that into your schedule. Yeah, uh, I would say pretty much exactly what Kenton said. For uh, your first semester, we also have an, an extra class for anatomy. So we have anatomy lab twice a week in the afternoons for about three hours each. Um, but even with that, I'd say you still have plenty of time to get studying done. And honestly, on anatomy days, those are so tiring for me that when I get done, I pretty much don't do a whole lot the rest of the rest of that night. Um, and it, you'll find time to manage. Um, and it, it, that's probably definitely the, the biggest skill you have to learn, um, both going into undergrad and then transitioning again into, into medical school. Um, you're learning different stuff. You have a, a larger volume of stuff to learn. So you have to uh, be smarter with your time. But at the end of the day, you'll have time to do the things that you want to and still be successful. Thank you. So the next thing, it seems like people are a little bit confused on the timeline for application. So we talked about doing it during undergraduate time, but there's also gap year, which it may be after you graduate. So can you just kind of talk about the application process and the timeline for that? Sure. You want to take every tree? Sure. So the medical school application timeline, so there's one application cycle per year. So essentially, if you, are, if you are an undergraduate and you are planning on applying right after you graduate, you would complete your application or start filling it out the summer after your junior year. So the summer between your junior and senior year is when you would begin the application process to then start the following August. So there's one application per year. So essentially, if you are not planning on applying immediately out of college, or you plan on taking a gap year or a couple or um, you know, pursuing a graduate program or something, it's just kind of always in that summertime period that you would begin the application process. So it typically opens you know, end of May, early June. And you know, we always encourage applicants to have their applications completed, have everything in, all the parts, kind of by the end of August or early fall is kind of a good timeline to shoot for, but it's a once a year process, if that helps. Anything you'd add, Megan? Um, no, and then, then the interviews take place between September and January. 
Um, so like Rachel was saying, the earlier you apply, the longer you're going to be considered for. Um, so that's why we recommend that you apply early so that that way you're not applying. Um, technically, you could apply through you know, no November, December. Um, but if you do that, almost all the interviews are already done. So it just doesn't give you that great of a chance. So don't be deceived by the deadlines that you see <laughs> that are printed. I think if you put it on your calendars to have everything turned in um, August or early September, you'd be in a much better scenario than someone who's turning things in uh, now, for instance. So. Yes, I, I might also add to kind of a little bit of my timeline. It was kind of what Rachel had said about applying during um, schools, because that was when I was a freshman in undergrad. It was a little confusing to me. Um, and like you have to take the MCAT also before you apply. Um, and there's time for that score to come back and things like that. And so I took um, of my junior year um, that May, I um, took time off that whole month to study after school ended and took it in June. And then my score came back um, the first week in July and then I submitted my application after that. So it was kind of up to the timeline of when um, they said like August, um, early fall when you should start getting things in. Um, so I kind of pushed the limit to that, but just for like a reference, if anyone's an undergrad, I took my MCAT um, June after my junior year and then submitted my application that fall of my senior year. And so you'll be interviewing when you're still in classes, if you haven't taken a gap year. So it's definitely, good to have time management skills and kind of prepare for that when you look at your class load for the um, fall of your senior year, but it is doable, but you'll be interviewing with people who are out of school, which is kind of um, interesting. Yeah, and you'll have to keep your GPA up that senior year um, as well, especially if you don't get in the first time around, then we really um, certainly look at those grades. We're gonna look at those grades anyway, but they impact your evaluation. So you can't let your grades slip that senior year because you were interviewing or things like that. So that's another reason you might consider a gap year because you only get one shot at your undergrad GPA and you can do other things if it's not as strong as you want it to be, or you've gotten feedback that you need to strengthen your GPA, um, but that would come after the undergrad. So it's just, you only have one chance for that GPA. There can certainly be bumps along the way, that's not a problem, but we want to see an upward trend. We wanna see that you're, you're a strong student and you're doing well. Um, and if not, there are ways to save yourself, but it would involve more school. Okay, so next some people are asking about some study habits and any tips for preparing for the MCAT. I know I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry, Emilio. Um, but actually, this is something that we're currently working on, too. Um, I'm starting a program called the MCAT um, Resource Outreach Program, where we're going to provide like um, easily accessible like uh, sample study guides, um, timelines, and then also access to free resources, study tips for medical students. Um, so one of, I guess, the one big advice I would say is take it seriously the first time. Um, you can take it, I think, I'm not, maybe twice, maybe three times, um, and I've heard that before, but um, keeping in mind that do it once and do it right is the kind of the mindset I had that whole semester um, before I took my spring of my junior year, I'd studied basically that whole six months, um, and you kind of have to balance it with classes if you're still in school, um, but definitely make it a priority because um, doing well on it the first time is definitely, I think, an advantage and um, not having to kind of figure out and push back a cycle if you um, believe you need to retake it. Um, but that being said, too, if you don't feel ready, I think some of those things would be important to maybe um, move your test date or think about taking a year off or something like that. Um, but definitely um, kind of managing your time and to have an adequate amount of time to study to be ready for it, I think is um, helpful. And along with that, there's sometimes, you know, if you're trying to take the MCAT more than once, it can be cost prohibitive um, just because it's, it's a pretty expensive test. And some of the materials that are circulating to that help you study are expensive as well. Um, for me, I took a lot of practice exams. I'd say that was probably the biggest resource that helped me. Um, you can obviously look at all the material and you'll be learning it in your classes, which I think is helpful. 
Um, like I thought Iowa did a really good job of preparing me for the MCAT just in um, terms of the courses I had to take for pre-med. But yeah, practice test your butt off. And like, like Kenton said, take it seriously because you do not want to have to to sit in an eight hour exam twice or three times, so. Awesome, that was great advice. So we have about five minutes left. So I think I'm gonna do our closing question for all four of you. Uh, and if we don't get to your question, please feel free to email me stem-education at uiowa.edu. I will send you a follow-up email with a lot of information that we talked about today, some links, um, but I just want to get to this last question before we run out of time. So for our medical students, is there one piece of advice you would give your past self before undergrad and or medical school? Yeah, I'll start with this one. Um, I'd say be willing to try new things, uh, especially going into your undergrad uh, career. It's one of the best times of your life and it's a, a really good time for exploration, figuring out what you wanna do with your life, the type of person you wanna be. And I think being open and willing to try a bunch of different, whether it be student orgs or just different experiences, I think not only will they make you a better applicant and more well-rounded, They'll just make you a better person in general. And I think that's really important. We need, we need good people as doctors. And so um, explore, figure out what you like to do and, and, and run with it. Uh, my advice to myself would be my freshman year self um, because I didn't do as well as I wanted to on some of my classes, um, like the beginning prereqs uh, my freshman year. And I didn't think at all I was going to be able to make it. I didn't know if I could improve in any of my classes. And if these classes weren't going as well, like how could I do better in future classes? So there's a lot of self-discovery, but I just didn't give up. And you just learn from your mistakes. So if you don't do well on a test or a project or even in a class, like what can you do better um, next time? I think is something it's easy to say, but it's really, really important to do because then you'll become a medical student if you don't give up and it's definitely possible. So that would be my advice. Megan and Rachel, do you have any last words of advice for our students? Well, I think it's really important to be present and um, pay attention to what you're doing. So that's something Rachel and I talk about all the time. Um, so be genuine in your actions. Make sure that you're really taking note of what's around you. Uh, a lot of times if you're involved in things that you really like and enjoy, you'll take more from that experience and then more doors will open without you even trying. So it'll help you build your network, be around people that inspire you. Um, I think that's really nice to be surrounded by folks that you want to be around that um, make you want to be a better person. So I think you'll find those folks pretty naturally if you're giving back and volunteering and things like that that's going to be really helpful to you yeah that's awesome and you know i would just reiterate that you know don't do things or don't seek out opportunities just to like check off a box because you think it will look good or you think that it's it's like the right thing to do your medical school application will be much stronger and much more genuine and reflective of you and who you are if you are pursuing activities that you're getting something out of and that you enjoy right and that you've got longevity i mean ken and emilio talked about this that they were involved with their activities for multiple years it seems and so that you know they likely enjoyed those, right? And so they're getting something out of that. So just like Megan said, be reflective and take a self-check of the things that you're doing and make sure that you're doing them for the right reasons and because you're getting something out of it because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna be beneficial for you. And just don't be afraid to ask for help. And I think that can be a hard thing and it can be really easy to accumulate that sense of defeat or frustration if things maybe aren't going your way or you're having a hard time finding opportunities. So build on your network and reach out for help. And there's no such thing as a stupid question. And there are people out there who are happy to help you, us included. So don't be afraid to reach out. And I also put our email in case you want to email us directly. You can email com, that stands for College of Medicine, dash admissions at uiowa.edu. And Megan and I watch that email 
every day, multiple times a day. So um, we're happy to continue to stay connected with you and answer your questions along the way. Huge thank you to all of you for being here today. I hope we have helped answer a lot of your questions. And like we said, Rachel put her email in there. If you didn't get your question answered, you can also reach out to us. This session was recorded, so we will plan to send this out to you guys if you want to rewatch it. Um, and then just reach out if you have any other questions. Thank you so much for being here today.